I'm Sister Toma Swanson, and I'm standing with the show Tapacitos de Vivencia in Spanish, which means Little Tapestries of Life. We are at the Martin de Porres Center in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I was a professor of art at Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut, and finally it was my turn for a sabbatical, so I chose to go to Peru, where we had sisters who were working there as missionaries. So I had a place to stay, and I went to Chimbote, Peru, and they are natural craftsmen. And as I saw the work in the museums and the work um, that they did, just the handwork that, I, that was a, a visible and, and for sale in the markets, I thought it would be wonderful if I could come back and teach them how to make something that would be truly artistic and also saleable, and so that would help their economic status. So I went home, and in 1986, I came back to Peru with nine bags of art supplies and began to um, find women to look for them. And that wasn't too hard because the sisters who had been there already had clubs, clubs de madres, clubs of mothers. So starting with them, I invited those who were interested to um, to join me with this project. Uh, the drawings that you see here were made by the women themselves. Um, we had a little group of people who could draw, and uh, the word got out, if you can draw, go see Sister Toma. So they came, and I had about four people who could draw. So they were the ones who drew on Kanyamasa, which is a, a, a textile of that they used to make towels, and they drew with marking pens. And then the drawings were put out, and people could choose the one they wanted to embroider. Here we see uh, um, the Mercado, which is the market. And markets in Peru, at least during this time, were not supermarkets in our sense of the word, but they were supermarkets in the Peruvian sense of the word, which meant <clears throat> that every vendor was an independent operator. So one woman had lots of potatoes in her, her garden, and she came to the market to sell her potatoes. Another is selling her pineapples and her oranges. Um, here you see the fish. Fish are big in Chimbote because it's a fishing port, and there are many fishing boats that go out of Chimbote to fish. Um, here you see the meat hanging up with flies and whatever, but that's the way it is. And, uh, Lots of children, lots of children and people with children. A complete um, chaos, but a lot of fun. I used to enjoy going to the market on Saturday morning and getting all the food that we would need for the week. When the steel mill finally came to Chimbote, it brought with it lots of people from the mountains who were looking for work. And it's beneath a big hill, the cross on top, which was put there by the bishop, uh, you can't tell much here, but this is the bucket. Here's the steel coming out, and the people, the workers. This was kind of the thing that made Chimbodi grow. Okay, here we have the rice paddy. Rice is a staple of Peruvians. They love rice, they grow rice, and here it is in the country outside of Chimbote, uh, which has a, the Santa River furnishes the water for the rice paddies. The poor live in, uh, at this time, the poor were living in houses made of estera, which is bamboo that has been flattened and woven together to make mats. So the houses are very open and very inflammable. The uh, cooking is done with uh, open fire or with a gas burner. And so fire is an, an ever-present danger. And here you see the fire, and the other problem is water. There's no water in this barrio at this time, and here's the fire truck with, with water, but it's not enough water, really, to quench it. So fire is a, is a constant uh, danger in the barrio. Well, here we have a real corner in downtown Chimbote. The Farmacia, which is a drugstore, that Farmacia Guerrero actually exists. And this is a bus, bus crash between two rival bus, bus lines. Now, 
at this time, each bus line was um, a separate company. So there was a lot of competition between them. But here you see the activity, the ambulancia, the spectators who are very excited about the bus crash. And here's the one bus that's ex escaped the crash. And this is actually true. One palm tree, I don't know what happened to this one, but there really was a hole just like that. So this is a typical example of the keen observation that the artists put into these drawings. Here you're looking at a kind of a picture of the barrio and the houses are astera, that is woven bamboo, which of course, as I showed in the fire scene, is very inflammable. But the problem here is that there's no water. Water is not piped to this barrio. Therefore, the water truck comes every week and everyone rushes with their buckets to buy water. And when you think that they have to buy a bucket of water but still are able to have their own little garden, and this is really true, they, they, they grow plants, they grow flowers, and they grow vegetables, in spite of the fact that water is, comes at such a premium. This is the fisherman's wharf, uh, or the moye, as it's called. And here is the wharf, and you wonder, what is this? These are the tires that they have attached to the wharf to protect the boats, who are crowding it, of course. And you see, all kinds of fish, fish, and people coming in. Coming in here, you have to pay to get in here. They vend, they sell food, they sell fish. If you want fish for supper, go to the wharf and you can buy your fish right off the boat. Uh, when I first got to Peru, I felt as if I had stepped into the Bible because sheep were still grazing along the roadside. Women were tending and spinning, dropping there with their drop spindles. Uh, it just seemed like a, such a, a primitive society. But the beauty of it is that the people themselves can actually visualize and feel biblical events occurring in their own environment. So this is what we see here, a nativity in the mountains of Peru with all the right people there. The, here's the this lady with her spinning and her sheep. The three wise men bringing corn and potatoes, the uh, fire, typical fire, the little donkey, and Mary and Jesus and Joseph um, in a beautiful setting in the mountains of Peru. I think the ability of the people to see directly and to observe directly and to draw things from that observation, they weren't worrying about being real creative in their work. That never occurred to them. And yet, as they embroidered, they discovered new ways of making stitches. They invented many stitches, as you will see if you come and look at the show, um, that aren't category, you know, are not a category of stitches. They um, responded to their environment in a way that was direct and appreciative and positive. Uh, and it was a joy to work with them, and I learned a great deal. So if you'd like to see these Tapacitos de Vivencia, little tapestries of life, come to the Martin de Porres Center in Columbus, Ohio, and you will be delighted.